Hey everybody, John Bogdan here with Dev Central, and we are going to start a new video series on the OWASP Top 10. So the OWASP is the Open Web Application Security Project, and they just released their Top 10 uh, list of security risks for 2021, right? So this list is... Uh, comes out about every three to four years. It's not, you know, specifically every three years or four years, but it's about every three, three to four years. The last list was released in 2017. Um, and the one thing about the OWASP Top 10 is that it is, a, is an, it is an awareness document. It's primarily an awareness document, right? Um, so one thing that I'll mention about the Top 10 is that just because the OWASP has their list of the Top 10, um, it doesn't mean that that's your organization's top 10. So use this accordingly as an awareness document, but not necessarily as a security standard. If you want to adopt a security standard, like an application security standard, then you should use the uh, what's called the ASVS, right? And this is put out by the OWASP as well. This is the Application Security Verification Standard. Now this is a standard, and it's designed to be verifiable and tested. It can be used in in all parts of a secure development life cycle. So this right here is the standard and I'm going to, and then, but the OWASP top 10 is the awareness document. So I'll just put, you know, this is uh, awareness, right? Awareness. All right. So again, the OWASP top 10, it is the top 10 most critical, you know, most, you know, the, the biggest, whatever, um, application security risks that are out there in the world today. Uh, so it is, I mean, it's a good thing to, to know about. So in this initial video, I wanted to talk about more of the methodology, like how does the OWASP even come up with the top 10 list, that kind of thing. So we're going to go over that real quick. Um, so this current installment, the 2021 version of uh, the OWASP top 10 is more data driven than it's ever been, but it's not blindly data driven, right? So there are 10 categories. So if you have, you know, the top, I'll just put top 10 out of here. These break out into eight on one side and two on the other side. And eight of these categories are derived from data that was contributed from a variety of organizations. So this is, uh, this is data. I'll just put data driven, if you will. And then these two are derived from a survey. So I'll put survey over here, right? So the OWASP organization um, you know, sends out surveys to different organizations, but they also collect a lot of data. And so, again, eight of the top 10 are derived from that data, and then two are just like, hey, we need to know, like, what's going on out there, people, right? All right, so previous data collection efforts that the OWASP uh, was engaged in, like in the 2017 and, and previous versions, um, they would send out a prescribed set of approximately 30 uh, what are called CWEs. The CWE is a common weakness enumeration. Um, it's managed, by the way, by the MITRE organization, the same organization that manages the CVE, the Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures. But the Common Weakness Enumeration is a, it's a community-developed list of software and hardware weakness types. All right, so you can just think of that like, hey, these are software and hardware weakness types. So bring that back to the OWASP. The OWASP would previously send data collection efforts out to these different, you know, organizations and different security practitioners around the world. And they would say, hey, we've got about 30, 30 CWEs that we're kind of looking at here. What are your applications doing with respect to that? And primarily they found that organizations would focus on those 30 CWEs, right? And they would rarely add additional CWEs to say, you know, hey, OWASP, we know you've sent us these 30, but we've got a few more that we think ought to be on the list. Um, but in, so that was in the past. They would, they would focus on about 30 or so. In this iteration of the 2021, they said, hey, let's just open it up and ask for data, right, on the data portion of this. And so there's no restriction on the number or the types or whatever of CWEs. So they went from about 30 uh, CWEs previously up to over almost 400 CWEs in this, uh, in this, you know, in this 2021 version, right? So there's a lot to analyze there. Um, so from 30 up to 400, all right? So in the CWEs really quick, there are what, what I'll call root cause types of CWEs, and then there's like symptom type CWEs. So like a root cause example would be 
like a cryptographic failure, for example. That's, that's like the root problem or like misconfiguration, security misconfiguration. Whereas like a symptom would be like sensitive data is being exposed or we've got denial of service, you know, problems going on, right? And so the OWASP tried to focus more on the root cause um, type of CWE or on the root causes whenever they possibly could, right? So they put out this, they published this call for data and, uh, and they got data from organizations that, that are, you know, testing vendors, security testing vendors, bug bounty vendors. There's a variety of different, you know, security type vendors that responded to this. And so several organizations came back with data uh, to the OWASP organization. And some of these were anonymous, but the data, the data that was donated from all of these people all around the world, all these organizations, um, accounted for over 500,000 applications. And this is the largest and most comprehensive application security data set that OWASP has ever been able to, to deal with, which is amazing for them, right? So they, they had lots of data to analyze, and ultimately they, they boil it all down, and they look at a couple of different things when they look at you know, generating the list of top 10. And so as they, as they mine through this data, they look, at a, they look at the exploit. So I'll put exploit right here. And then they also look at impact. So I'll put exploit slash impact, right? So the, uh, the exploit is like, hey, how easy is this thing to exploit? Um, and then the impact is what's the impact of this, of this security risk? Like what's the, you know, what, what's, the, what's the problems that it's gonna cause, right? The technical impact, all right? So they, they went through all of these steps, they mined through all this data, they, they focused on the root cause as much as they could on these CWEs, they looked at the exploitability of these uh, security risks, and then they looked at the impact that these security risks uh, could have, and they finally landed on the top 10, right? I'm not going to write them out here because I'm going to do a video for each of the top 10. So that gives you something to hopefully look forward to, right? So come back for each of those uh, uh, upcoming 10 videos for the top 10. Um, one quick thing that I'll mention is that in the 2021 list, there are three new categories compared to the 2017 version. There are four categories that have naming and scoping changes compared to the 17 version. And then there's also some consolidation that has happened from the 17 version into the 2021 version, right? So it's a little bit of a uh, little bit of the the changes that happened from 17 to 21. All right, so here they are, the top 10. Number one is broken access control. Number two is cryptographic failures. Number three is injection. Number four is insecure design. Number five is security misconfiguration. Number six is vulnerable and outdated components. Number seven is identification and authentication failures. Number eight is software and data integrity failures. Number nine is security logging and monitoring failures. And number 10 is server-side request forgery, also called SSRF. All right, so those are the top 10 for 2021. So hang in there with us. The next video will be the, you know, the, the, the top 10 you know, as we go through each of those individually. So thanks for watching this Lightboard uh, lesson video with us today. If you like to sing, click up here on our Dev Central logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.